Hey everyone, on this episode, Vogue Board sent us an electric skateboard. It's the Riot, so let's take a look. So we have here the Vogue Board Riot. This is the hub motors. So let's open up the box and see what all is inside. We have the board itself, an eraser, I guess to erase any scuff marks that get on the board. Looks like a wall mount, some tools for the skateboard themselves, the charging brick, the wireless remote with the USB-C charging cable, and finally the instruction manuals. So now let's take an up close look to check out what this board looks like. Now that you've seen everything that's in the box, let's take it out for a ride and see what this thing can do. I've ridden the board now probably for about 10 miles in total, and I think the board is very comfortable to ride. The 90 millimeter wheels uh, is good for most surfaces. Of course, it's definitely not all terrain, but uh, for most paved roads, it's actually pretty comfortable. I'm gonna see if this skateboard can make it up there. So as you can see, the hill behind me is very steep. The scooter that I've had in the past, I think it was 750 watt motors uh, with air filled tires and it couldn't even make it up this hill. But to my surprise, the skateboard made it up the hill on speed mode four with no problems. So far, I've made it up every single hill. The powerful motors on the skateboard is rated at 600 watts in each of the rear wheels. And it's plenty of power to take me up any hill that I've wanted to go on so far. Now I will say that the brakes are extremely strong. Even when I'm on a hill or an incline, uh, the, whenever I hold down the brakes, the board stays completely still. So right now I'm currently on an incline. This is going downhill and it's completely still. I'm gonna get on it. I can position my feet however I need to and then just start riding. So the deck itself is made out of seven layers of Canadian maple and one layer of bamboo. And that gives it a nice, comfortable, smooth ride to me. Uh, it doesn't hurt my feet when I'm riding unless the terrain is just absolutely terrible. But on paved roads like this, um, it's comfortable for my feet and my feet doesn't go numb, so. Now to start riding the board is pretty simple. There is a power button under the board, but you don't need to press it. You just kind of kick it and the board will start up automatically. Then you just turn on your remote control and the remote control will sync with the board. Now there are currently four speed modes on this board. The first speed mode goes to about six miles an hour. Second one goes to 12 miles an hour. And the third and fourth one goes up to 28 miles an hour. Now I've never tested that and I don't want to go 28 miles an hour. I think that's mostly just for power. Just because you can go 28 miles an hour on this board doesn't mean that you should. <laughs> I typically cruise in about speed mode three, going about 15 to 20 miles an hour. Now, as far as the range on this skateboard, it can go up to about 18 to 22 miles of range. I think that is plenty of range. I think that's on the higher side of most budget boards. I think if you're someone who's commuting for work in the city, a college student who's looking to commute across campus, this board is going to be perfect for you. Um, I like to use this just riding around the park just for joy rides and just uh, enjoying the, the day. All right guys, this is a really steep hill and the brakes is working wonderfully. The skateboard's brakes is amazing. It kept me on the board without having fallen off and the whole time down that hill, 
The brakes was very smooth, it wasn't choppy. Now let's talk a little bit about the remote. To turn it on, hold down the power button. You're going to see that it says disconnected. That means that the board itself is not on. Either turn the board on by pressing the power button, or you can kick the board forward and it'll turn on the board. So now that the board is on and connected to the remote control, uh, you're going to see the screen looks like this. To change your speed mode, you're going to press this button right here. Speed 2, speed 3, speed 4, and back to speed 1. To go reverse, just press the power button twice. And you see that the arrow goes back. Press the power button twice again. And it will go forward. This over here is the remote control battery life. And on the right, the B here is the battery life for the board. The speedometer is in the middle with the two zeros. Up top is your odometer. Uh, this one says 32 miles. Now you can also change your brake strength. Right here it says I'm on brake level 1. So to change the brake strength, you would need to pull your brake lever back, hold it, and while you're holding it, press the menu button. And when you're done, you can let go. One thing that I didn't see in the instruction manual was how to change from miles to kilometers or vice versa. When I first got this, it said kilometers, so in order to switch it to miles, you'd have to turn it off by holding down the power button. And then hold down the power button and the menu button at the same time. You see here that it's blinking miles per hour. And to switch it to kilometers, you would just move the wheel. And when you're done, you can just press the power button. I find that the control provides plenty of grip. Now you won't be able to see this or notice this on the screen, but the remote control actually feels a little bit rubberized and it has a really nice feel and grip to it. It feels very premium. The charging port is USB-C and I really like that because most everything is USB-C now. And the board itself takes about four to five hours to fully charge. You also want to remember to charge a remote controller when you're charging the board. It would be kind of pointless to have your board fully charged, go out for a ride only to realize that your remote controller is about to die. Now I'm going to go over a few things in my personal opinion that could be improved. First of which is where the charging port and the power button is located. I think they're both in an awkward position. The charging port is here at the bottom. So in order to charge it, you have to lift the skateboard up or flip it upside down. And also with the power button here, sometimes I have to reach down below and kind of feel for it and see where it is to press it. It's not that big of a deal because you can turn the skateboard on by just kicking it forward, um, but sometimes it may not turn on and you do have to reach down below for the power button. So next is the aesthetics. The underside has a nice colorful orange design to it and it looks really cool. But on the top side, where most people see it, it's kind of a boring gray. It's pretty basic and plain. I think if they did a little bit more color to it, added more color to it, maybe switch out the wheels for some more colorful wheel options, or something bright to make their skateboard stand out. Again, that's in my personal opinion. Um, I think the board could have stood out a little bit more. Another improvement I'd like to see is on the remote control. There's battery indicators for the remote and for the skateboard itself, um, but they're indicated by bars. With the bars, it's better than nothing, but a percentage-based battery indicator would have been perfect. In conclusion, I really enjoy riding this board, but the thing that stood out to me the most is that Volkboard's customer service was excellent. Whenever I had a question or concern, when I emailed them, they would respond back within a day or less. If you're in the market for an electric skateboard, do check out Volkboard. Uh, this model that I have here is called the Riot. This is the standard version. They do have an extended range version that gives you longer range, uh, has a bigger battery. I'm going to have the links and everything down in the description below, and I'll also have a special coupon code for you guys as well, so check it out.